I'm Rob Jones, and in these mini tutorials, I'm going to show you how you can build a drum rack in live for making beats, which will save you heaps of time and get your drum sounding nice and fat right away. As a producer, I know all too well how tedious it can sometimes be starting up a track, clicking on drum sample after drum sample, and carrying out the same process of beat creation and mixing. Well, with Live's racks, you can make your life much easier by creating an instant drum setup that can be loaded into a session to make your own fat beats in seconds. What I want to do is make a simple kick, hat and clap 4-4 beat, which could be used in some house, techno or similar genre. So I'll start with the kick. First up, I'm going to add an instrument rack to a MIDI track in Live. I'll show you why it's an instrument rack and not a drum rack shortly. Then I'm going to click on the chainless button, which will then allow me to create multiple chains within the rack. I'll explain what that means when we've got some kicks in here. Now I just need to go through my kick samples in the browser and find the ones I like the most. Then drag them into the chain list, one after the other. Every sample I dragged into the rack there was automatically loaded into Live's simpler sampling instrument and placed onto its own chain. Each one of these chains here is basically like its own MIDI track, so the rack is essentially like another mixer, containing different MIDI instruments that can be processed and mixed any way I like. Right now, if I trigger the rack by playing a MIDI note, then we'll get all of the kicks sounding together. This is because the chains are all triggered by the full MIDI note range, which you can see if I click on key here. These are the MIDI note ranges that the chains respond to, so we're getting every simpler sounding at once. Another way of triggering the instruments in the rack though is by choosing the chain. And this is why I used an instrument rack. If I click on the chain switch now, then you get a chain select display, which allows you to assign a particular chain number within the normal MIDI range for each one of the samples. You can see they're all set to zero at the moment, but if I drag one of the bars here, then I can change it to one, and the next to two, and so on. Now what I can do is use a macro on the rack to control this chain select. The macro's display is turned on with the top switch here. And these are basically eight dials that you can use to control parameters on any devices within the rack. So if I control click anywhere on the chain select ruler, or right click with a PC, then I can choose Map to Macro 1 from the context menu. Then I can choose which chain we hear by rotating the macro. So now, when I play a note of C3 on my keyboard, which is the default root key on all simplers, then we can switch between all my kicks by rotating the macro control, which will all be playing back at their original pitch. I've now repeated the exact same process for hats and claps. So I've got three MIDI tracks, each containing an instrument rack, with all my favourite kicks, hats and claps loaded in. What I can do now then is to put them all in the same place. So I'm creating a new MIDI track on the mixer and adding a drum rack to it. Now a drum rack is very similar to an instrument rack. Only the chains here are assigned to a MIDI note each and are triggered by the pads alongside. So what I can do now is go back to my kick instrument rack, click on the header and drag the whole rack onto the new MIDI track and then directly onto a pad in the drum rack. Then I can repeat the process for the hat and clap racks. So now I have a drum rack containing my three instrument racks on the drum pads for the MIDI notes C1, D1 and E1. So I can trigger each pad by playing those notes on my MIDI keyboard, which is awesome. What I'm going to do now though is construct the standard 4-4 pattern for the drums by creating a MIDI clip on the track. So I'll double click on a free slot on the MIDI track, after which we get a blank one bar long MIDI clip that I can draw my drums into. You can see the beats at the top of the grid here. One, two, three, four. So I'll draw a kick on each one of those. With a hat on the off beats in between. Then put a clap on beats two and four. Which will give us the basic drums. Now what I want to do is change my samples using the drum rack's macros. 
so I just have to click on the kick racks chain and then go to the first macro dial on that and repeat the process from before. So choose Map to Macro 1 from the context menu. Then go to the hat rack and choose Map to Macro 2. And lastly map the same macro in the clap rack to Macro 3 on the drum rack. Now I'll name the macros in the drum rack by choosing Rename from their context menu. And now I can play my MIDI clip and rotate the macros either with the mouse or an attached controller which automatically maps to the macros on a rack to scroll through all my different drum samples until I find the right sound. So you can see how we're beginning to create a really useful instrument here that will save you loads of time in future sessions. Next time I'm going to carry on building the rack, showing you how you can incorporate some different effects to make the drums sound fatter and more professional. See you then.